Welcome. Uh, I just want to tell you, today's going to be a very exciting day for us, and we decided not to do anything with outside uh, speakers or guests. There is so much happening on Williams Island that I thought today is dedicated to our home, our island. Uh, we're going to have Arlene with us, Arlene Verdi, who really is the key to communication, bringing everyone together. You're going to have Jeff Klein give us the updates, but more importantly, I want to talk about a lot of operational issues that we're dealing with on the island and tell you what is being done about them, how we're resolving them. Because the one thing I don't want anyone to ever think is that whatever your recommendations and suggestions are, they go on deaf ears. We have an amazing staff that will take it in stride, listen to it, and where possible, fix it. But you also have to have patience because a lot of the things that we're experiencing now are due to all the construction that's going on on the island. But I can assure you, whatever you have to say, we want to hear it, and hopefully this year all of those things get corrected. We do look to have our new operation open and running in the Island Club probably by the end of the year, and hopefully at that same time we will be able to put back together again all the damages that have been caused. Again, I look forward to seeing you during the show, and Arlene, we're going to bring you on now, and have a wonderful afternoon listening. And good morning. And as always, welcome to Williams Island TV. Uh, we normally have special guests that we come on that we talk to and get insights into their lives, what their events are and such. And we do have somebody very exciting that will be coming online with us in a couple of weeks. Uh, you may know uh, the very famous TV star from South America, Uruguay, Mexico, named Don Francisco. And he's celebrating his 60th anniversary uh, as a TV celebrity all over South America. And he will be joining us. I will tell you a quick story. I just came back from Uruguay, and he was with me on the trip. And sitting at the airport at Montevideo, I can't tell you how many hundreds of people in the concourse came over to him and wanted to discuss things and meet him and have that picture taken with him, et cetera, et cetera. Then we got on the plane, and it was worse. Every stewardess, every pilot wanted to come on and interview him and talk to him and just get to know him. But we're very fortunate that he will be joining us very shortly on one of our shows. And I think it'll be very exciting because it's a history that's remarkable uh, to it. Anyway, today we're going to do something a little bit differently, but more important. We're going to talk about the island. And there's so many things going on with the island right now. Uh, and shortly, we're going to talk about um, the status of the project. Jeff will be with us, Jeff Klein. But there's a few miscellaneous things we do want to talk about because we've had comments and questions asked to us about how do we fix some of the issues that we have? How do we do something better with them? What do we do to correct these problems? And people feel that it goes on and on and on, and we've done nothing about it. Uh, the majority, if not all of the issues, whether it's gates, whether it's dogs, whether it's landscaping, whether it's construction, I don't know that people realize for the last almost two years, we have been under tremendous construction with the underground new sewer systems, new water systems, new piping that has totally just destroyed the road work, right of and in many cases, landscaping. Coupling that with the fact that pretty soon well, not pretty soon, we are under major construction for the Island Club. And because of that, there's really no point to repair a lot of the work that's been done because that will be getting ripped up and redone at such time as that's completed. And as you'll hear from Jeff later, we're still on schedule to have that completed by the last quarter of this year. The other thing is landscaping itself on the island. And the reason we don't want to do the landscaping right now is because Hotwire has just yesterday begun work here. And they're going to be ripping up all the right-of-ways, landscaping, and getting their infrastructure into the island. So you have to be a little bit patient. I would say, though, within the next 12 to 18 months, the majority, if not all, of these issues that we've been complaining about or concerned about, uh, they're on the radar of Jeff and his crew, but they will be all corrected and all fixed as soon as all the construction is done. But I want to talk about first about a little bit about the gate because, Arlene, you're very aware of how that's going to work. And the first thing that we are doing is we will be working on a new system for the resident gate. We realize it's difficult. We understand at certain key points of time the lines are impossible. 
So Jeff and his team have come up with a system that I think will resolve most of this problem and ultimately, hopefully, all of the problems. So Arlene, explain how the new gate system is going to work. Okay, well, uh, moving forward, we, we currently have a gate access app um, that will allow you from your mobile device, you, you can add and um, delete guests. So what you'll be able to do is just get on your phone, you can put, it, you can put a, a date from and to, so it's not something that has to be monitored all the time. So let's say you have a construction crew that's coming to your apartment for two weeks. You can put those two weeks in the mobile app and as soon as that's over it automatically deletes the um you know the guest it you can you can also uh add permanent guests let's say you know you have your daughter that's coming every so often you can put them as a permanent guest and they will always be allowed to come through the gate as long as you have them on there as a permanent guest also um in the next couple of weeks we're going to be adding a barcode reader to the resident lane so that will allow any of your guests to just pass through the resident gate lane versus the guest lane so they'll be they'll have a barcode or a qr code they'll just put it in the qr reader and they'll be able to pass through so that's going to alleviate a lot of the backup that we get at the gate you know during the you know the morning times uh, so to clarify that if i have a workman I can download the app, which is available, right. download a barcode reader, a gar barcode. Uh, it's going to be a barcode that's going to be, uh, the, the instructions are here. Right. Then I send it to my guest, right. workman, exactly. whomever. Mm -hmm. There will be a new card reader, not the one that's Not the, the one resident. that's currently there. Right. Correct. And it will be on the driver's side. Mm -hmm. So that particular person just holds up his phone, goes right through. He does right. not have to wait in the resident line, in the non-resident gate. Okay. He won't have to wait in the in the gate in the guest lane. He can just go through the resident gate. The bar will come up and allow them through. Now, I also understand that right now, immediately, we are setting up a call it an iPad system for a better word, where there will be a second guard. If and I believe it's already inactive now, mm -hmm. where that second guard is going to walk down the line, go up to your car and say, "Excuse me, where are you going?" You tell him. He goes on the computer on his iPad. And he has the ability to take you out of your lane, click the gate to open, mm -hmm. and you go right through. Correct. That's in effect, I think, this week. Yes. So that's already beginning to work. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of that is before, even so he walked down the aisle, he still had to tell someone to open the gate. He will now be able to open the gate. Mm -hmm. He can go on, check that the gate, the person is actual, and he can also call the resident. Correct. So I believe... The first one is an immediate result. The second one is a permanent. Um, I believe the second one should be in place within the next 30 days. It, yes. And um, you, can, you can download the app right now and add and delete your guests. That will show up on the iPad. So you don't have to wait until we get the barcode reader to download the app. No. So Not to interrupt, but I think you just touched on a, probably a major problem even right now. We only have about 25% of the residents that use that app. Right. And because of it, when your guest gets to the gate, if you haven't put the name on the list, they still have to get a phone call. If you had utilized your app, put it down on the get app, call the gate or sent it in with that person's name, they go right through. Right, exactly. Right. And, with, and with the app, you no longer have to call. Yeah. You ju it's just going to show up. But on nobody's using it. Right. Nobody's using it. So we're, we're kind of giving a, a, a big push for residents to download the app for ease, you know, ease for their guests and for, for themselves. So you can, you can go on any of the app stores that, you know, that you get your apps from, download the gate access, the ABDI gate access app. You can get the instructions. Um, it's going to, it, it already went out in the email. You can download it that way. You can call me. You can call the POA office. You can call um, security if you have any issues with that first login. So if you have any issues with that first login, putting in your information, you get a warning back or um, some kind of message back, you can call the uh, security office and they will set you up.
Now, the building managers also are aware of this, and they know how to do it as well. Um, well, they they are they don't have the ability to help you with the login, but they will have the um, the instruction manual. That's what I'm saying. So they can show a resident in their building how to download this app. Exactly. And then if they have any problem putting it together, they can call you. Or they can whomever. call. They can call security. Security, security is the one that's going to help you with any of the login information. I can help you with any of the how to add or, or delete, you know, um, the guests so and how to work it. To sum this up, and I, I think some of it is the res residents' responsibility. We have an app right now that would probably alleviate about 30% of our traffic by the mere fact if you download the app, you put the guest name onto the app, it will automatically appear in the guardhouse. Mm -hmm. The guardhouse will know that when I get to that gate, I don't have to be called in. I don't have to be approved. It's already on the list. I will go right through. I don't think you realize the majority of the delays that take place in that line is calling people and having them approve the guest. Sometimes they're not even home. Sometimes they don't have the right number. They're not answering. They could be busy. And you can spend three to five minutes on each person. So by utilizing this app, it's going to make a big difference. The beauty is now you have the ability to download the barcode app. Mm -hmm. Now, if you do have somebody, you put them on it, you send them the barcode, they go into the other lane, the resident lane, show the code and go right through and never have to get on the non-resident lane. Mm -hmm. So, and also at this point and probably for a while, we have a guard that will be walking around with an iPad, can go up to the car, which he will, if you're on the list, if you have a guest, if you do whatever you're doing, he can let you in, take you out of that line and get you through. So I believe with all of this, I think Jeff and his crew have come up with an amazing opportunity to correct the problem and it should be almost immediate. So, And, and as soon as we get that barcode reader for, yeah. for the guests, it's just gonna be... And what do they estimate the barcode? 30 days, you think? Yeah. Yeah, give it take 30 to six days, that will be in place. But in the meantime, everything else is. Right. There'll be a big announcement once the barcode reader is in. So that way you can, um, you know, give your guests the barcode and they can just get in that much faster. Okay. The other thing is I want to talk a little about an issue that we are having. Um, and I hesitate to bring it up because it's not a major issue. But a few people have commented that they don't get certain services any longer with BreezeLine. The reason for that is some of the services we get are third-party services, some are BreezeLine, and the third-party operational issues that have been eliminated have absolutely nothing to do with the island or BreezeLine. That company no longer is servicing for it. So you can buy it, but it's not, any, it's not included any longer. When we go to Hotwire, it will be exactly the same situation. Presently, Hotwire's agreement includes it, but that's not to say at some point it may not be eliminated because it's a third-party provider. It's not a Hotwire item. So I did want to explain to you the problem you may be experiencing has absolutely nothing to do with the POA. It's nothing to do with the contract. It's that it was a third-party provider. It was an option that was given to us when BreezeLine offered it. They don't offer it any longer. And besides which, within a year, that's going to be eliminated anyhow. On the other side, the good side is you may have seen some of these huge trucks on the property. That is Hotwire already starting the infrastructure. They're exploring where the right-of-ways are. They're looking for the uh, piping, the conduit. So they are on site. You're going to see a lot of that going on in the next six, eight months to a year. And I believe in about 18 months, they should go live, give or take, with the new system that we have coming out to the island. So that's the stuff that you're starting to see on the island. I know some people thought there was construction going on yesterday because there was like, looked like a movie set of trucks, but it was that hot wire has actually started work on the island. Um, I now want to talk a little about grievance. Uh, and the reason this is very important is because I don't know that people really understand the grievance procedure on the island. There's actually three types of grievances that the POA gets involved with. Number one is if you are insulting in any way to a, uh, an employee, they can file a grievance against you as a resident. If an employee is same to you, you can file a grievance against that employee. 
The third one, which is a very large gray area, is a resident to resident, because that's something that is subjective in many ways. We've had a few of those where two people get into a fight, they don't say the things that they should say, they got a little uh, nasty, and the next thing we know, we're getting a call that we would, somebody wants to file a grievance against a resident. If you have or you feel that there's bodily harm, if there's some kind of aggressive behavior that would cause you to feel unsafe, before you even call us, you call the police. Because the amateur police is the first step before we can really deal with a grievance of that consequence. Because once the police file a report, then we as the island will take it from there. The process that happens with any of these grievances is as follows. Florida statute changed about three years ago. It used to be where the grievance would be filed. It would go to the grievance committee. They would make the recommendations, and then it would come back to the board. Unfortunately, that has changed. Now what happens is normally Jeff Klein and myself will try to eliminate the grievance by just having two people talk and come to a peaceful coexistence. If that doesn't happen, the next step is it goes to the board of directors. Public the board will make a recommendation as to what the penalty, if any, is. That recommendation goes to the grievance committee. The grievance committee will then either ratify what the board recommends or say no. Either one then goes back to, if they say no, it's over. If they say they ratify it, the board still has to get it back to them. And we then have to approve the grievance. And then whatever it is, if it's a fine, if it's a, you can't use the facilities for a week, that has to be approved, and then the board will uh, give direction to operations to effectuate it. The problem we do have, though, is at the board meeting, neither party will be present. Both parties are more than welcome to be present when it goes to grievance. You have the right to have legal representation if need be, but my suggestion would be before it gets to a resident-to-resident -resident grievance, try to work it out because it's kind of embarrassing if you go to the board with this grievance it's on television everything comes out in public and it may be something that could have been rectified by just a mere conversation but i wanted you to understand those are the three grievances <clears throat> if an employee files a grievance against a resident then the resident could be suspended if found sort of guilty they could be fined so there's various things that can take place unfortunately we have had uh, grievances in the past where some of the residents thought it was okay to be totally derogatory and denigrating to some of our staff, which is something that will not be tolerated, as well as we will not tolerate a staff member talking that way to a resident. We take that very seriously on the island. We pride ourselves that we have excellent staff. We all make mistakes, but they're respectful. I can tell you in five years, I don't think we've had 10 complaints and that's in five years and not one of them well one of them came to a point where somebody was suspended but other than that we've been able to resolve them so please we want to know if there's a problem we want to know if there's a grievance but if it's between two residences and it happens on poa property go to the police if it's physical if it's not you could file it but i'm not sure in most cases there's much the board can do about those kind of grievances um Okay, the status of the project, I'd like to have Jeff, Jeff will come on in a short while and explain that because that's very exciting. We are having a dog problem on the island and it's sad because unfortunately we're getting more and more dogs. We do have a policy that you're not supposed to bring a dog into the restaurant if it's not a service animal, but we have to take you at your word because we're not asking for documentation, we're not asking for something where we may know or not know. I know the other night there were two people in the restaurant and the dogs were barking at each other and I can tell you they were not service animals, I know the people. It's unfortunate because what will start to happen if that happens, we can check with the building because every dog, if it's a service animal, must be registered in your building. If we find that dog was not registered as a service animal and you decided just to lie to us and bring the dog into the restaurant, you might face a suspension and that's something we really, really do not want to have to do. So abide by it for the convenience, not only of you, but for the other residents. But when I see a, 
I mean, when I see a dog sitting at the bar, eating at the bar, and barking at another dog at the bar, I said, you know, these are not service animals. Uh, so anyway, I do, I ask you very kindly if you would be careful. The other problem we're having is dogs are not being picked up by their residents when they walk around the island. And it's getting to the point, we now have two full-time people cleaning the island, and it's still not working. So what we are going to have to do, unfortunately, and it's not a cheap process, we are going to what's called, for a better word, genetic testing. And every dog that's registered on the island will have to be tested, and they will have a genetic makeup made. If we find poop around the island where it wasn't picked up, it will be tested by a service, and it will tell us what dog and who the owners are have done this. It's an extreme measure. It's being done at a lot of country clubs around the country today because, unfortunately, this is becoming a bigger and bigger problem. So we ask you, unfortunately, to please pick up after your dogs. If it's housekeepers, if it's children, if it's whomever, they must abide by these rules because it's not only that it's in the grass. Now it's all over the walkways. Yeah. And I see it. I have a dog and I walk my dog and I see what people do. So I understand from Jeff, this will be implemented. It'll be brought up at the board meeting, but it'll be starting within about 30 to 60 days. So please understand, it may be a little bit of an inconvenience, but once this is implemented, it will be attached to a fine if people violate it. Um, the other thing that we are doing is we are redoing, uh, Jeff met with his crew and with traffic control and uh, we are reevaluating and in some places implementing speed bumps, stop signs to ensure some of the safety issues because we have some crosswalks. Unfortunately, because we can't put a stop sign, we have to put speed bumps or humps, whatever it might be, to slow traffic down. One of the areas is the intersection by Bellini before you go into the resident gate. We will be putting speed bumps there because we have no choice. That is one of the most critical areas People are literally close to getting hit, and we have to slow the traffic there. The other location is going to be coming down from the tennis court area and the restaurant. That intersection on outbound traffic will also have speed bumps because people come around a corner, they speed through, somebody's coming out and makes a turn. So those two areas are being dressed as we speak. Some of the other areas will be addressed, but not until the roads are repaired because we don't want to put something down and have to take it up. Uh, but that's something that's going to be happening almost very soon. Tell me a little about the end of the year event. I know you have some things coming up on uh, that. We have, we have a and let's full, talk about positive things. Yes, we have a, <laughs> we have a dogs. full calendar. Um, at, first, let me, let me let you everybody know the best way to get to our calendar is through our mobile app or through our website. You can see till the end of the year. So if you ever want to know something that's going on, the best way to do it is to um, log into the app or log into the website and you can see the entire calendar. Another way to uh, get the latest information on our events is to join our WhatsApp groups and to look out for our Monday email. Our Monday email has all the links to our WhatsApp groups so you can join that way or you can just give me, you know, send me an email and I will send you the links to whichever WhatsApp group you want to join. We have one for food and beverage. We have one for the culture and entertainment. We have one for the family events, our food and beverage events and our rackets events. So you can get very specialized information regarding any of those groups. Um, just to give a few of the events that we have coming up, we have our Israeli Tennis Expo. There are people coming from Israel to put on a great um, tennis, tennis exhibition for us. We also have um, an outdoor, that, I'm sorry, that is on March 18th. On March 22nd, we have our Bossa Nova happy hour here on the tennis terrace. Um, some of the uh, family events we have, we have a pedal yard that's going to be at the Med Village parking lot on the 24th, that's gonna teach kids how to ride a bicycle. So if you have, you know, a few kids that are, you know, kind of iffy on it, that's a great um, event to, 
take care of kids too. Go downstairs to Jeff in the office. I think he wants to learn how to ride a bike. I think we, we yeah, should we let him know. Yeah, we get him involved too. He could be one of the instructors. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and then we have our Easter. Easter's early this year. We have Easter's on March 31st. We have our brunch and we have our, you know, yearly egg hunt. So watch out for that. Um, our season end this year is going to be amazing. It's uh, going to be themed April in Paris. So I'm not going to say too much because we do want it to be an impression when you walk into the event. That's going to be on April 10th. So watch out for the flyer that's going to be going out in the next uh, couple of days. Passover, uh, we have a Passover in Seder, which your beautiful wife is going to be the cantor. Um, that's going to be on the 20, April 22nd. And then we have our Passover meal, which is going to be on the 23rd. So just don't forget to look for the calendars. We have printed calendars. We have our website calendar. We have our WhatsApp groups. We have our Monday email. So we're trying in every way to get our information out to you about our events. So we just need a little bit of help from you just to watch out, you know, actually be proactive and look on our calendars and you won't miss anything. So I want to talk about the April in Paris. Yes. By any chance that we're going to have can can dances there? Well, because I'm not going to so, say. Well, I if am so, not I think say. it should be all the men of the island. Oh, well, there you go. I would love to see you in a can can outfit. You would, wouldn't you? <laughs> I would too, as a matter of fact. It won't be a pretty sight. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> it's going to be an exciting event. It really, really is. So watch out for the flyer and... You know, it'll be coming out soon. Make your reservations early because I'm sure it's going to be, it is going to be reserved seating like the, the season opener. Um, so you can reserve your, your seat. And this year we have an added bonus where we have um, the seating up here on the Island Grill Terrace for an additional cost. So you'll have VIP seating. So it'll be exciting. And, and let me let me add something because you may not realize, and some of you do, what Arlene does. <laughs> this is one of our unsung heroes that we never really see. She hides in the office. She does all this, but it's amazing what you accomplish. Thank you. Explain a little about what your job is. Well, I wear a lot of hats. Um, I am the officially I'm the communications director, but we. You know, we coordinate all the events between the departments. We put out all the communications. We design all the flyers. I have a team. We have Natalia and Stefan that are behind the scenes. They make things happen. Um, we make sure that everybody is coordinated with the reserve seating, with the flyers, with their reservations. Um, we do all the social media. We do, you know, we do the website. We do the WhatsApp groups. A lot of hats. A lot of hats. <laughs> so it's all you. It's my team. With your we team, have, yes, yes I we know. have a great team. But it it shows you, you know, people really don't know what people do on the island. All of these things happen in the monarchy. It's it's almost like going to a Broadway show opening night. You sit in the audience and you have no idea what it took to get that show on. But to a person sitting there, every single night is opening night. Yes. <laughs> and you create opening night without people having a clue the work that goes into it. And that's, that's quite an accomplishment. Thank that's you. Quite, and you're always smiling. Oh, you're always happy. It's great. You know, I love well, it. I take working with a guy like Jeff. It has to be happy all the time. Absolutely. He's, he's two thumbs up. There you go. <laughs> he's a great support system. Well, I thank you all. Really, thank I you. thank you tremendously. All right, I'd like to introduce Jeff Klein now because I think we want to talk about the update of what's going on with the island because I know everyone's asking, when is it going to happen? Is it really on time? Is it really on budget? It's so exciting. And I, I think I, rather than you and I talk about it, I'm going to ask Jeff to come on and, and give an I'm explanation. And I'm going to give up my seat to okay. Jeff. <laughs> we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Um, as I said earlier, I felt with the complexity of the uh, updates that's going on with the island club, the pool, the clubhouse, I thought it best if I bring Je Jeff in because Jeff has been really spearheading this in addition to all the other duties he has on the island, like running this place, <laughs> only 5,000 people, 80 acres, and a few minor details of 300 employees. He has taken the lead on making sure that this clubhouse gets done, gets built on time, in budget, and as it's supposed to be. So I thought better than me give you an update. Jeff just literally got off the phone with the uh, construction meeting. Jeff has two meetings a week, every single week, 
one construction with the staff and one with the construction crew. So Jeff, one of, some of the questions we're asked is, are we on time? We won't talk about the budget because we are. Um, but more importantly, where we are, what we'll include in it, et cetera. So, yeah, please. so first and foremost, always great to be here at Williams Island on the uh, Bob Shelley Show. Uh, I got to overhear the uh, first segment with Arlene, and like you said it best, unsung hero. I mean, when you ask Arlene what, what her job is, I mean, to me, she's the lifeline. Um, you know, she's the, the conduit to the residents, the conduit to the staff. She bridges all the gaps, she brings everyone together and she makes sure that communication is cohesive and collaborative. And, and it's because of Arlene's effort with her team that everyone knows what's happening. Uh, so really kudos to Arlene and her team for doing a great job communicating. And we'll obviously lean on her as we get closer uh, to the Island Club opening, but it's been a great project. I mean, we were shoveling the ground back in June of 23. Uh, we all laughed because the cart left the barn without the horses. Um, and we've done a lot of work thus far. Uh, but it, it's exciting to see. We are coming out of the ground. We are pouring concrete today. We have eight trucks of concrete being poured today. Uh, we are basically putting back what we have unearthed at the Island Club. So the first question I heard Bob ask is, are we on time? Yes. Q4 this year, we intend to get uh, substantial completion. Uh, we are striving for CO without TCO. Uh, but as everyone knows, construction projects are never perfect. Uh, and as you start to put things back and you go through your inspection process, we're always at the mercy of those inspecting. Um, but we are working with the most professional group I've worked with in a long time, from RCC, who is our general contractor, Stice, who is our owner's rep, EOA, who is our architect and our designer. Uh, you know, we meet two times formally every week. We do two to three hours a week, two times a week. Uh, and then we're in the field and we're in the field a lot making decisions on the results. So we're making life real time decisions, which are keeping this project on time. And I want to talk about that just uh, not, not to interrupt you, but I don't think people understand this is not new construction where you build a building and there's no surprises. We are taking a building apart that's 40 years old. We are taking bathrooms apart that are 40 years old. And then we decide what we do with what we find because what we thought we would find and what we find in this case have never been the same. Yeah, and, and the other thing is, as everyone can imagine, over 40 years, the codes change. Sure. So how we built it 40 years ago is very different than how we build it today. Having no piles 40 years ago and now needing a lot of piles today obviously adds expenses. Um, but you know, it's look, it's lessons learned. Um, but the best thing about it is the construction committee led by John Fells, uh, you know, there's a great group of people, George Garcia, Richard Burton, Barry Lewin, um, Jay Eichel. These are residents who have committed a lot of time to make sure what we're doing you, I mean, you're in meetings, I turn around and you're in a meeting. I didn't even know you were in the meeting. And these are residents who really care about what we're about to deliver and the knowledge and expertise that's being supported is making the project move at a much faster pace. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that everything is perfect because it's not. We found things that were shocking to us, but we're not allowing those items to slow us down. Uh, so Q4 is realistic. Um, Thaddeus, the operators are working on all of the animation plans as Mr. Fells likes to call them and how we're gonna bring this Island Club to life uh, through c &E events, through dining, through pool experiences. Um, and I gotta tell you, I think it's gonna change the island come Q4, beginning of Q1, 2025. And, and I wanna comment on what you just said about the island itself and the clubhouse, et cetera. I know we get a lot of questions. What are we gonna do with it once it's built? What events are gonna be held there? What's, how many nights is the restaurant gonna be open? I think over the next 90 days, a lot of those answers will be more specific. Because as we've been building it, as the team has been building it, you start to realize you have certain capabilities. If we do this, we have more capabilities. As a small example, we just added a 300 seat, a 200 seat banyan deck that wasn't there before. So all of a sudden our seating capacity goes from 175 to 350, let's say. Those are the kind of things. So with that change will also come the ability to enhance the events and functions that we can have there. But 
I think if we give the team about 90 days, we'll know more about the yeah. restaurant, the more about the restaurant style, the events we're having, That's the right. types of social. And we've engaged a uh, branding training operations team that uh, does work for luxury hotels, St. Regis, Ritz Carlton's, Four Seasons, Montage, uh, JW Marriott, Hilton Curios. So this is not just Thaddeus and I you know, throwing some spaghetti up against the wall saying, hey, what's going to stick? We're, we've engaged experts to help us brand, logo, create concept, and bring that island to life uh, because it's what the island deserves, right? Yeah. The island's spending a significant amount of money. Um, it's the largest project this island has done in ever, ever. Uh, and we owe it to the residents to make sure what we deliver is exceeds their expectations. We're no longer in the meets expectations world. We're trying to exceed the expectations. Well, you know, it, it's, I, I just want to go back to something that you touched on, but it's, it's more amazing than we really can think. This island is blessed with talent and talent that you would never realize lives here. If you look around your island, you have people that have been amazing in their field of endeavors. But when doing a project like this, you need legal, you need construction, you need management, you need finance, you need everything in decorating. We are blessed. We have a guy like John who chairs, John Fells, who chairs the committee, who has been a home builder and a builder for longer than we like to think. We have a guy like George Garcia, who even so he's been in education, he and his partner have been involved for years in decorating design, structure. You have a Jay Eichel who's been in the construction industry all his life. You have a guy like Richard Burton, who's an attorney, but does land use attorney and has been very helpful with those kind of things. Barry Lewin is probably the premier um, hospitality guru working with the Blackstones of the world for years, who offers amazing insight. But it's interesting because I remember when we talked about coming to this island, and this was one of the subjects we talked about. It was like out there. Yeah. We talked about the day-to-day -day operations. But one of the things I never told you that was really very important to me is I knew about this at that time. You had done this. You had lived through it at the Fountain Blue. You had lived through it through Turnberry's renovation. The, what you bring to the table is the blend of understanding the construction, but understanding how it affects operations. Yeah. And that's so important. How many times have we done a kitchen here and then we open it up and it doesn't work and we have to change the line? That's yeah, I mean, the, tough, the toughest part of what I do now is managing the group of individuals you just listed. These are experts. Yeah. Um, and I got to tell you, I am Googling words every day. When John speaks about construction, I have to go Google the term because I don't always understand the difference between a helical pile and a pin pile, <laughs> right? But I'm learning. And the good news is this project's given me the ability of, to really expand my learning and understanding. I'm very hands-on with the project, um, but I'm getting to utilize real talent and um, always thinking with the operator's mindset. And if I don't think I understand it, I go back and I talk to the operator. I go talk to Thaddeus. I go talk to a Thomas who's operated in food and beverage. I talk to Arlene about how we're going to communicate these types of things. Um, you know, I talk to Deborah about the human race or CJ. I mean, I have an amazing resource of team too that behind the scenes are contributing to what this island club is gonna look like. I just get to sit at the table and, and sort of merge and bring everybody together. Um, but yeah, it's great. I mean, it's talent. I mean, it's a talented group and every decision is being made thinking about the budget, thinking about how we're gonna execute and never compromising the resident experience. And it's been amazing because the contractors love it. They don't build something, we see it, and then say, oh, change that, it doesn't work. We are identifying those issues before it's being built, and that's not only keeping the project on time, but it's keeping the project on budget. Well, and along with this, there is a downside to this, unfortunately. There's disruption, there's destruction, there is all kinds of chaos that goes on with sure. landscaping, with roads. Yeah. With, with, and unfortunately, people, this, this reminds me of a very, very, I'm going to use a quick analogy. Moses takes the people out of Egypt, puts them in the desert. Moses goes up for 40 days and nights to get the tablets. 
But when he comes down, the people had lost faith. It's almost like we start the project. It's going amazing. People are thrilled. And now some of the complaints start coming in. Why does the landscape yeah. look like this? Why do the roads look chopped up? Why, you know what I'm saying? It's like you lose, start to lose faith. And I know you spoke about it earlier in your segment with Arlene, but I think you hit it on the head. You know, my job is to create disruption. That's sort of what my job is. And patience is important. Patience is probably single-handedly the most valuable attribute one can have. And, and I would ask that the residents show some patience. Yeah. Is it frustrating? Absolutely. Are you seeing things that aren't ordinary and custom for you to see at Williams Island? Absolutely. But just know that these are strategic decisions. These are strategic decisions not to waste money on something we know is going to be disrupted, to then get it to be disrupted, to then spend the money to put it back. And you talk about roads, you talk about hot wire, you talk about uh, the 4,000 building about to take down a guard gate, that's infrastructure. The resident gate, infrastructure. The island club, infrastructure. These are things that impact aesthetics. So if we're patient and we get through all the major construction and then we start to put it back as we're working our way out of the island and we're resurfacing the roads and we're adding the beautification, we then are living in a world in 2025 where we're back to being beautiful. That's right. Until the next disruption. That's where they've been. More tennis courts, more sure. pickleball courts, sure. right? When I was asked to join this organization, it wasn't because you wanted me to focus on today. You asked me to focus on tomorrow. That's right. And with the ever-changing demographics, there's needs for children's events. I mean, listen, Williams Island never had a pedal park. We teach kids how to ride. And I heard you say, maybe Jeff Klein should go. And the interesting part is I did. I went to Pedal Park on a Sunday. The following week, I rode 39 miles on a bike for charity. It's amazing how fast Pedal Park teaches you how to ride a bike. But it's just about being patient, being collaborative. If you see something, say something. We're listening. We may not fix it right away. We may not respond back to you as quickly as you'd like about why we didn't fix it, but just know our single most important critical role is we care, we listen, and we're trying to make Williams Island the single greatest lifestyle community in South Florida. And, and it is. And, and I want to add to that because budget and finances is critical to the island because we have 5,000 people that are paying dues here. Um, and what we've done is Jeff puts together a five-year construction plan, a capital plan, an operations plan, let's call it. And then we have to budget accordingly to make sure all of those things can get done within a budget without assessments. I think what's amazing about all the things we're doing right now is there's been no assessment. Yeah. We've brought it in within the confines of what we said. Our reserves are stronger than we've ever had them in the history of the island. And when we do our next, let's say, tranche of improvements... Yeah. Again, they will not require, at this stage, any assessments because we are preparing now for the budgets of those items. So this is not an instantaneous where it's instant gratification. Yeah. Quite to the contrary, this is a program that never stops. You never complete what you start because otherwise there's complacency. Uh, but what we've done is, and Jeff and I and Thomas and the whole team, we work very carefully to make sure we put a budget together that fulfills the desires and yeah. needs of the island. But as Jeff said, it's patience. Because when you do one thing, it damages something else. Then you have to create something else that's, that's gonna right. fix that. That's it's right. a never, it's like painting a bridge. You paint the bridge, you get to the end, you gotta go back and start all over again. I mean, look at Hotwire. I mean, you know, 10 years you've had Breeze Line, that contract's coming to term at the end of uh, May of 2025. But you can't just flip off the switch on Breeze Line and turn on the switch of Hotwire. Hotwire needs a year to create an infrastructure, you know, laying fiber, making sure we get the fiber from the, the main hub to the island club to the POA to the buildings. It takes time, it's strategy, it's disruption. I mean, I think the trucks were out on the island yeah. yesterday. Uh, they, were, they were almost going head to head with some of the trucks on the uh, piping for 4,000. But I love it. When I see construction, I think progress. When I think progress, I think things are improving. When I think improvement, I think real estate values. And let's be honest, I mean, 
who wouldn't be happy with increased real estate values? As people say when you sit down, says we live in a paradise. We do. We do. But um, what's, what's even more exciting is by this time next year, sitting here next year, 90% of what we just talked about is over. Yeah, the good news is I think next year we'll be doing these interviews live from the Island Club. That's right. Poolside, pina coladas, awesome ceviches, some yeah. great Mediterranean, Floribian flair, yeah. uh, steel drum bands, jazz music, lots of CNE events. I mean, that Island Club is going to become the epicenter of entertainment and uh, family. And again, you know, I'm blessed to lead the team at Williams Island, and this is certainly my home away from home and a family to me, and I'm excited about all the great things that we're doing. Well, we thank you. Thank You're a you. great partner to have. I couldn't ask for anyone better. Thanks. The board appreciates you. The staff, we're not sure yet, but we'll, we'll figure that out. Hey, I'm know, here two years. You know, give them a little chance. Two years, no grievances. That's, That's pretty right. good, That's Bob. great. <laughs> but anyway, I think today was a very educational. It brought everyone up to date with all of the issues, all of the problems, but all of the solutions as well. So if you have problems, if you have issues, please, our staff is here to listen to them. Be polite about it. Be patient about the correction of it. But do not think we are not listening. But anyway, thank you, Jeff, for My being pleasure. here. Thanks, Thanks for Bob. being an amazing partner. Thank you. Thank Likewise. you. I want to thank the board of directors for being so supportive of us, Arlene and the whole staff. And have a great week. Take care.